Summary of Kaffir Boy by Mark Mathabain Johannes Mark Mathabain's story starts when he is five years old and lives in South Africa during the time of apartheid. When he wakes up, the police are already in the ghetto in Alexandra, which is a neighborhood in Johannesburg, South Africa. They are searching for black adults who do not have their passbooks in order to either arrest or extort them. Mathabane's mother runs away every time the cops come, leaving him and his brothers alone. His father gets in trouble a lot. As a young boy, Mathabane gets used to the constant threat of the cops. They are always in the back of his thoughts. Mathabane is six years old when his dad loses his job. Even though he is looking for work, the cops put him in jail for almost a year because he is out of work. During that time, Mathabane's family lives on the edge of hunger. To stay alive, they dig through a nearby dump for food scraps. Mathabane sees that his father has changed since he went to jail. He says that his father has become a brute. Mathabane's father gets his old job back, but he spends most of his money on drinking and gaming. As a result, Mathabane's family is still in terrible financial shape. Mathabane begins to hang out with a group of boys his age. They often sell empty bottles to buy tickets to a local movie theater where they watch violent movies made by white people. Mathabane thinks that the real world of white people must be as cruel as what we see in movies. Mathabane's family goes to a Christian preaching meeting, even though his parents believe in tribal spirits and voodoo. The black preacher makes fun of tribal beliefs and says that everyone must follow the faith of the white man. Mathabane and his father both hate Christianity very much when they leave. Prices for food, rent, and bus rides go up, but Mathabane's father's pay stays the same. His mother looks for work, but she has a hard time finding any. Mathabane is hungry, so he follows a group of young boys into a Zulu warrior camp where they say they can get him food. But when he gets there, he finds that the boys are prostituting themselves to adult men for food and money. Mathabane runs away, unharmed but scared. Mathabane's father loses his job again, so Mathabane and his father go to his father's clan hometown to see a witch doctor. The witch doctor gives Mathabane's father a good luck charm. Mathabane can't believe how poor the tribe reserve is. Mathabane's father says he should leave him there so he can grow up to be a good tribe man. But Mathabane says he'd rather die, so his father stops. Mathabane's mother has another baby when they get back to Alexandra. They find out that the government wants to tear down their part of Alexandra, so they move to a new part of the ghetto that is full of migrant workers from the tribe areas. Mathabane is raised to believe in voodoo magic and his father's tribe religion by his parents and the people in his neighborhood. However, by the time he is seven, he starts to question these ideas. Mathabane's mother and grandmother have been trying for months to get him a birth certificate and all the right papers so that he can go to school. The process is too complicated and takes almost a year. But Mathabane finally goes to school, and even though he hates his first few days, he grows to like school and learning over time. In his first year of school, the director tells him he is the best student in a class of more than 200. Even though he keeps doing well in school, his family has trouble paying for his clothes, books, and tuition, and his teachers beat him when he doesn't pay his fees. When Mathabane skips school for a month to get himself kicked out, the director sends bigger boys to tie him up with rope and drag him back to school. His mother tells his teachers to beat him so hard that he can't get out of bed for a week. Mathabane is 10 years old when he sees a brutal murder of a man who wasn't even hurt. He starts to feel like he has no chance in the world because he is black. Mathabane tries to kill himself, but his mom finds out about it before he can do it. She helps Mathabane see how many people, like his younger brothers, love and rely on him, and he decides to keep fighting instead of ending his life. Granny gets a job as a gardener for the Smiths, a white family. Mrs. Smith starts giving Granny used clothes and comic books for Mathabane. Mathabane goes with Granny to meet them one day. Even though he is scared of white people, he finds that Mrs. Smith is kind, but her son Clyde is a very racist person. 
Mrs. Smith gives Mathabane some English books to read, and he falls in love with the stories. This makes him want to learn again and pushes him to try to learn English. When Mathabane is 13 years old, Mrs. Smith buys him a tennis racket and teaches him how to play. Scaramouch, a person of color, sees Mathabane training against the wall one day and thinks he has potential. He chooses to start coaching Mathabane. Mathabane likes to play tennis, and Scaramouch becomes a surrogate father to him. Mathabane usually sides with his mother, even though he hates her Christianity, when it comes to his real mother and father. His father hates that Mathabane spends all of his time on white man's education and tennis. He sends two men to try to take Mathabane and send him to a tribe school in the mountains, but Mathabane threatens them with a knife, and they leave him alone. Soon after, Mathabane goes from primary school to secondary school. He does so well on his entry test that the government gives him a scholarship to a good English-speaking school. His family is proud of and happy for him. He puts more effort into his studies and tennis practice. He meets a player who tells him about a tennis ranch owned by Wilfred, a white German liberal who hates apartheid and offers to help Mathabane train. Wilfred helps him get better, and Mathabane wins his first event just two years after he started playing. He plays in more events and does well in them. Mathabane's school starts making students argue in Afrikaans, which is the language of those who support apartheid and which all black students hate. In 1976, the government says that all Banta schools must teach mainly in Afrikaans instead of English. This causes a lot of anger among the people of South Africa. In Soweto, 10,000 students hold a calm protest, but white cops open fire on them, killing hundreds of children and teens. Violence breaks out and spreads through Soweto, the ghettos in Alexandra, and the rest of the country. Schools are closed, and Mathabane spends all of his time at protests and rallies. As police violence gets worse, protests turn into angry, violent crowds that fight and steal. There is chaos in the ghetto. Mathabane is split between the senselessness of the violence and the euphoria he feels when he sees black people get their things back and get extra food for the first time in their lives. After three months, the rebellion is put down by the South African forces. Mathabane goes back to Wilfred's tennis camp and tells the white people there what he has seen. They understand that most of the news about violence and riots was kept from them by their government. Mathabane starts getting death threats from people he doesn't know, telling him not to hang out with white people or play tennis, which is seen as a white sport. But Mathabane makes friends with Andre Zietzman, a white South African who just got back from living in the United States. Andre tells Mathabane about how people of all races are treated equally in the United States. This makes Mathabane want to go there. Mathabane keeps playing in events with better skill levels and enters the SAB Open, an international tournament held in South Africa. Even though he gets kicked out of the tournament quickly, he meets American tennis great Stan Smith and becomes fast friends with him and his wife, Marjorie. Stan says he will try to get Mathabane tennis scholarships from American universities and gives him a lot of money so he can travel and keep playing in South African tennis events. Even though he doesn't do well, he plays in the national sugar circuit. Mathabane leaves high school, and as the months go by, he waits impatiently for Stan to tell him about funding. He loses hope and becomes poor for a while, but then he gets a well-paying job at a bank so he can start helping his family. But just a few months after he starts, a number of American colleges offer Mathabane scholarships. He picks a school in South Carolina. At the end of the story, he says goodbye to his family and goes to the airport. He is the first black person to leave South Africa on a tennis scholarship and leave apartheid behind. About the author Mark Mathabane was born in South Africa in 1960 as the oldest of seven children. As a black child growing up in South Africa, Mathabane felt the full force of apartheid's brutality. According to his story, Kaffir Boy, Mathabane did well in school, but poverty, racism, police abuse, and gang violence made it hard for him to learn. As a teen, he started playing tennis, and his teachers and coaches quickly saw how good he could be. 
he made friends with a few white foreigners in South Africa who didn't follow the rules of apartheid. These people showed him the outside world and the freedom it offered. Mathabane's fame in South African tennis grew slowly, but it was interrupted for a few months when he took part in the Soweto uprising in 1976. This was a student protest against the apartheid government's policy of making black students learn Afrikaans. White police opened fire on innocent students, which turned the protest movement into months of angry mobs, riots, and violence in which an estimated 700 people died, mostly at the hands of police. Stan Smith, a tennis player, helped Mathabane get a sports scholarship to a college in South Carolina after he graduated from high school. Mathabane went to two different schools before getting an economics degree in 1983. Even though Mathabane worked as a speaker and college professor in the end, his success as a writer began soon after he graduated from college. In 1986, Mathabane wrote a book called Kaffir Boy. It became a national bestseller, and Oprah Winfrey and President Bill Clinton gave him talks at the White House. In 1989, Mathabane wrote a second book called Kaffir Boy in America. He also wrote several stories about members of his family and two novels, Ubuntu and The Proud Liberal. Mathabane lives in Portland, Oregon, with his wife and children. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.